Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 10th overall spot over on Fantasy Pro's Draft Wizard. Now, in today's mock draft, we are going to be drafting up against ESPN's pre-draft rankings, so it's going to be a lot like we are actually drafting on ESPN, except we are drafting up against the computer. But before we get on into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get to this 12 team mock draft from the 10th overall spot using espn's pre-draft rankings the roster positions are one quarterback two running backs two wide receivers a tight end flex kicker defense and six bench spots so let's get into things now drafting from the 10th overall spot typically in years past I love drafting at the end of fantasy football drafts in a 12 team league that means pick 10 11 or 12 right now I don't really have a preference but I still do kind of prefer to pick towards the end of drafts to get that one two punch to start off your team at the turn of the first and the second round so the draft begins with Justin Jefferson Jonathan Taylor Jamar Chase Cooper Cup Travis Kelsey Christian McCaffrey Derrick Henry Austin Eckler and Tyreek Hill the biggest thing I disagree with from these first nine picks of the draft has to be the fact that Jonathan Taylor went at the 102. Now, do I understand someone wanting to go with a running back over Jamar Chase or Cooper Cup? Yes. Yes, I do. But would I pick Jonathan Taylor at the 102 instead of Christian McCaffrey or Austin Eckler? The answer is a resounding no, because I think that's a little bit crazy. I also think Derrick Henry over a guy like Bajan Robinson or Austin Eckler is absolutely insane. Now, I have been doing a bunch of drafts on underdog fantasy, and in these best ball drafts, running backs are not as frequent in the first round, right? The first round might go, and we might only see two running backs get selected in the first round, but I do think in redraft leagues, while the wide receivers are becoming a little bit more hot, I think people are still going to want to draft a bunch of running backs early. So I think this is a pretty normal start. Some people won't be willing to pull the trigger on Travis Kelsey at the 105, but I definitely get why you might want to do that because of the fact that he is by far and away the best tight end in the NFL as well as in fantasy football. So we are up at the 1.10. I definitely would have loved to get Tyreek Hill there, but obviously he goes one pick before me. Look at the board here. Best running backs available. Saquon Barkley, Bajan Robinson, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Nick Chubb, Ramondre Stevenson. Best wide receivers. We got CeeDee Lamb, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, and Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, I do technically have some of these wide receivers ranked in a different tier compared to others, but to me, it is not like a large gap between a guy like Stephon Diggs, who I really like, compared to CeeDee Lamb. So I think I'm going to go with the best running back available here. We're going to go with rookie Bajan Robinson of the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons ran the ball into just eternity last year. They kept running the ball every single game. Doesn't matter if they were getting the ever-living shit kicked out of them. They just kept running the ball. I think the reason why they drafted Bajan Robinson so high in the 2023 NFL draft is because they want to use him very heavily every single game. He's the clear workhorse back on the team. I know the Falcons offense as a whole isn't necessarily the best. They have Drake London, Kyle Pitts, but the quarterback is definitely mid in Desmond Ritter. They're not the best offense either, head coached by Arthur Smith, but they want to run the shit out of the ball. So Bajan Robinson, definitely worth a first round pick. After we went with Bijan, came Saquon Barkley, Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, and C.D. Lamb. So the question here is, do we want to go with the one-two punch at running back, or would we rather just go ahead and snag our best wide receiver available? I think we are going to go ahead here and start our draft off a little bit different, because a lot of these mock drafts I've been doing, I have been hammering the wide receivers early. And while I love that strategy, this season, I still think that running backs are very valuable in fantasy football drafts early on. I still think that even though the kind of trend is to go wide receiver heavy now, you can still zag when people are zigging, right? You can still be a running back early drafter and still win your fantasy football league. So since we've done so many wide receiver early fantasy football mock drafts, this time we are going to go with a running back. So Jacobs, Pollard, Chubb, 
Don't think you can go wrong with any of these guys. I do have Chubb ranked the highest. I think Deshaun Watson's going to step up big time this year. They lose Kareem Hunt. So 9-inch Nicholas Chubb is the clear workhorse running back on a team that I think is going to look a lot better this year again because I think Deshaun Watson steps up to the plate last year. Nick Chubb was really solid. He was the RB6 in PPR last season. He has had multiple top 12 finishes. I think he's an incredibly safe running back. Sure, is he going to catch 60 passes this season? Probably not, but... With Kareem Hunt gone, there obviously is that upside for him because with Kareem Hunt there, they're not going to throw the ball to Nick Chubb. They're just going to throw the ball to Kareem Hunt, obviously, because Kareem Hunt is an excellent pass catching back. So after 9-inch Nicholas Chubb, we see A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, D.K. Metcalf, Josh Jacobs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Pat Mahomes, Tony Pollard, Travis Etienne, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris, Josh Allen, Jalen Waddle away, Waddle Waddle, Jalen Hurts, Kenneth Walker III, Ramondre Stevenson, Aaron Jones, and Jameer Gibbs. Something I've noticed a lot this year is that quarterbacks are going a lot earlier in fantasy football drafts. Now, I still think in the more expert kind of leagues, in the leagues where you're playing with people who watch a lot of fantasy videos, they read fantasy content, they might not be wanting to pull the trigger on Pat Mahomes at the 209, but we all know in your office league, your at-home league with your friends, maybe with your college buddies, there's a chance that Patrick Mahomes just goes super high. Do I understand why people are doing it? Yes, but am I really going to, in a real fantasy football draft with money on the line, want to take Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen in the third round? Probably not because I just feel like I could find a quarterback a couple of rounds later like Justin Fields, who I like a lot. Obviously, I don't like him as much as Mahomes or Allen or Hurts, but I see that crazy upside out of Fields where he could be the quarterback number one. Same thing with Lamar, Joe Burrow. Even a Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence type wouldn't shock me if either of those guys finished inside the top three at quarterbacks. We started Bijan and Nick Chubb. I think Brees Hall is a really solid pick this year, but we already got our running backs, right? We don't need to go super running back heavy just because we drafted two running backs off the start. So we are going to be going with a wide receiver. Mark Andrews is available, as is TJ Hawkinson. But if I'm being honest with you guys, in a normal PPR league, I don't necessarily think you need to draft in a 12-team league a tight end super early. I think in 10-team leagues, 8-team leagues, the quarterback, the tight end position is more important because every team is going to be stacked in a 10- or 8-team league, or most teams are going to be, right? You're obviously going to draft with Stevie Wonder or something in other leagues, and they can't see anything. They have no idea what they're doing. But in a normal 12-team league, you don't necessarily need Mark Andrews to put you above your opponents because not every team is going to be stacked. I don't think Andrews is a bad pick by any means in the third round, just not necessarily someone who I'm targeting uh, with super high. Like I'm not every time at the 310, like, damn, I need Mark Andrews, right? I might take him sometimes, but not this time. T Higgins, Devontae Smith, Chris Olave, Keenan Allen, best wide receivers available according to fantasy pros. T Higgins, Devontae Smith, Chris Olave. Chris Olave is the wide receiver one on the Saints. But I'm going to be honest with you, I do have some qualms with Chris Olave because if Michael Thomas is able to stay healthy, now that is a humongous if. I think Chris Olave could be a humongous fucking bust directly in your face, and I don't necessarily know if I trust him a bunch. Am I fine drafting him the third, fourth round? Yes, but do I love it? No. Uh, T. Higgins or Devontae Smith, you're getting great offenses with really good quarterbacks. Obviously, if A.J. Brown was to go down, Devontae Smith would skyrocket directly to the fucking moon. And if Jamar Chase got hurt, T. Higgins, the same thing. Knock on wood, we don't root for injuries. I'm going to go with T. Higgins, but again, it really kind of is a pick em between the two. I do have T. Higgins ranked higher, so he is going to be my pick here. Obviously, the Cincinnati Bengals offense is going to be humming all year long, but the same thing can be said about the Philadelphia Eagles offense and Devontae Smith. After T. Higgins, we see Debo Samuel, Brees Hall, Damian Pierce, and Isaiah Pacheco. I am probably one of the founders of the Damian Pierce fan club. If you guys were watching last year, right after the NFL draft, I was banging the fucking drum like I was in the marching band for Damian Pierce. I loved him in the 10th round, and then he started skyrocketing, and I still loved him. I loved the situation. The fourth round, though, that's a little too damn high for me. Now, again, do I still like him? Do I get the thought process? Yes, because I think he does have top 12, top eight running back upside. But I'd definitely rather just have a wide receiver in the fourth round, if I'm being honest with you. Now, the question is, do I want Mark Andrews or one of these wide receivers? Because I think Mark Andrews in the fourth round is pretty close to a smash draft pick. Now, I know some people might like Hawkinson or Kittle more than him. But the question is, by the time I get to pick again at the 5'10", 
are one of those tight ends that I like a decent amount going to be available, or are they going to be gone? The answer is they're probably going to be gone. If you like Hawkinson, Kittle more, I get it. I'm going to go with Mark Andrews. I think if Lamar Jackson is able to stay healthy all year long, Mark Andrews is a guarantee as long as he's able to stay healthy as well to be a top three tight end in fantasy football. He's finished inside the top six for the last four years in PPR, and it would take something crazy. Even though they have Zay Flowers, Rashad Master Bateman, they have Odell Beckham Jr. there. Mark Andrews is a red zone threat. And obviously, Lamar Jackson loves throwing him the ball. Had he not have been available there since he fell in the draft, I probably would have went ahead and drafted the best wide receiver available, which was Devontae Smith. I prefer Devontae Smith mightily over a guy like Debo Samuel. I'm starting to get a little bit more on the Debo Samuel train, if I'm being honest with you guys. I'm starting to kind of feel the hype that is Debo Samuel. He regressed mightily last year in terms of touchdowns. He was scoring touchdowns left and right in fucking 2022 or in 2021. Then in 2022, he struggled. But I'm going to be honest with you. I just trust Devontae Smith's situation more. It seems like big cock Brock Purdy is going to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers. But who really knows? It is Kyle Shanahan after all. And it is only June right now. And Brock Purdy isn't necessarily fully healthy just yet. So after Mark Andrews, we see James Conner, Devontae Smith, Chris Olave, Amari Cooper, Christian Watson, Miles Sanders, Wiki Wiki, DJ Moore, Joe Scheisty, Lamar Jackson, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Hopkins, Alvin Kamara, J.K. Dobbins, David Montgomery, Tyler Lockett, Rashad White, Deontay Johnson, and Cam Akers. So I think our decision to go running back early paid off in a big way. Because I do, don't do at all want to pay a third-round draft pick for Kenneth Walker. I don't, in the fourth round, want to draft Miles Sanders or James Conner or Pacheco or Damian Pierce. I really like Pacheco. I really like Pierce. I really like James Conner, but not in the fourth round. Rashad White, I'm pretty off of him, but I get the thought process. He's clearly the number one running back on the Bucks. But in the fifth round, Alvin Kamara, who might get suspended for half the fucking season in the fifth round, it is disgusting. It is disgusting. And that's why we do these mock drafts so that we understand what to do when we actually get into a draft. And again, we are using average draft position. We are using the pre-draft rankings from a fantasy football site where people are going to actually be drafting on. I'd assume probably half the people that watch my videos play on ESPN. I think ESPN, the platform is pretty terrible if I'm being honest with you, but I think a lot of people play on it because when you type in fantasy football on Google, I assume ESPN is like the number one platform that shows up. And most of the time, me included, I'm on NFL. I don't think NFL is the best fantasy platform, but I've been playing there since I was in middle school. I am now 24 years old. I'm in a Yahoo league that I've been in since I was like eight years old. So I'm just on the same platform I've always been on. So we're looking good here. Bajan, Nine Inch Nicholas Chubb, Tee Higgins, and Marky Mark Andrews. I like Swift a ton, but I'd rather just draft wide receiver here. Godwin, London, McLaurin, Michael Pittman. One of the Indianapolis Colts received a suspension today for gambling. I don't know what these players are doing. I don't know what they are thinking. Don't do that if you're an NFL player watching today's video, because of course there's just hundreds of NFL players that watch my fucking fantasy football videos. I like Michael Pittman a ton. I like London. I like McLaurin. I like Godwin. This is really, really close between McLaurin and Pittman for me. I like Godwin, but his wide receiver 19 when there's a guy like Terry McLaurin available, I'd rather have McLaurin. McLaurin's been a guy who I've talked about a bunch on the channel. He has been basically bent over a table by his quarterback position all career long. He has had some garbage quarterbacks throwing him the ball. Now, obviously, we don't think Sam Howell is all that great, but compared to what Terry McLaurin's had in the past, it might even be considered a step up. He's a locked and loaded top 24 wide receiver. People are sleeping on the commanders a little bit. If you wanted to go Pittman, I get that too. But I definitely think that in terms of skill set, if you're trying to compare the skill of two players, to me, Pittman is a guy that's going to see a bunch of targets. That's why I think he's going to be good. But I think Terry McLaurin is actually a really talented player. I, I don't think Pittman's all that amazing. Uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, TJ Hawkinson, Darren Waller coming in the sixth round. Hawkinson is a steal in the sixth round. That would have been amazing if I could have gotten him, but I already drafted Mark Andrews, so we're not going to necessarily, again, want to draft two tight ends. I think that's a little bit crazy, especially if you draft Mark Andrews. I don't even want a tight end on my bench. When week 13 comes or if he gets injured, knock on wood, I just want to pick someone else up that I can throw into the lineup. I don't want to have to draft his insurance plan, wrap two condoms around my roster. Interesting tidbit of information. Don't use two condoms at once. It's actually more dangerous than just using one. All right, so back on into things. Fields is very interesting here. 
in the sixth round. Looking at the teams that are ahead of us, though, one, two, three, four, five of these teams already drafted a quarterback. And then one, two, three, four of them don't have a quarterback. So the question is, can we wait till the 7-10 to get fields? I would say probably not. I also like Herbert. I also like Lawrence. I think Fields has that true number one upside in fantasy because of his rushing upside, right? Because he can run the ball, get all his rushing yards. He could be the number one quarterback in fantasy. Herbert doesn't have much rushing upside. Neither does Trevor Lawrence. Both of them can run, obviously, if needed. But we're not going to see Justin Herbert go out there like Mike Vick and fucking stiff arm someone into Middle Earth, hurdle over him or something, right? We don't expect that out of Justin Herbert or Herbert the Pervert or Trevor Lawrence. I think I'm kind of almost hogtied here into going Justin Fields because I love his upside. So I think I'm going to do that. Normally, I don't draft a quarterback super early, but when a guy like Justin Fields, who I don't think is a one-year wonder, he's not Peyton Hillis, I think Justin Fields is going to have a fantastic year yet again. I think he's a steal, if I'm being honest with you, in the sixth round. Normally, I like to wait on the quarterback position, but this year, I just continue to talk myself more and more into going with quarterbacks in the middle rounds instead of waiting all the way to the end, which was a good decision because we got Fields, then Herbert, Lawrence, Watson, and Dak all coming off the board. Now, I still do like Tua. I'm a huge fan of Tua. Obviously, I'm a Dolphins fan. I think Tua is going to potentially finish as a top five quarterback this year, but he has no, not the rushing upside of Justin Fields. And as a Dolphins fan, I don't want to see Tua run the ball. Obviously, with those concussion issues that he had last year, I think he's going to be just fine. But every time he runs the ball now, I shit myself. There's a little bit of brown stains in my pants after watching that guy run the ball. So George... Kittle comes after Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, the pervert, Kyle Pitts, Dallas Goddard, Jerry Judy, Calvin Ridley at the 609. Chef's kiss, man, you freak. This man goes in like the third, fourth round of underdog drafts. I know he hasn't been playing for a while, right? He's missed the last couple of years. He missed all of last year for gambling. But the year prior, he missed a majority of the season as well. Remember back in like 2021, this guy was on top. 2020, he was on top of the fucking world. He was one of the best receivers in fantasy. DeAndre Swift, Mike Dub, Javante Williams, Marquise Brown, Drake London, James Cook, Brandon Cooks, Brian Robinson, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, Christian Kirk, Dak Prescott. I never liked James Cook. I just want to throw this in there, a little bit of uh, knowledge here. There's a lot of people pointing Dalvin Cook to the Buffalo Bills. And that would be really bad for James Cook because James Cook isn't even good. I don't think he's really good at all. And that would like completely suck any fantasy football value out of him. So we're in the seventh round. We got two running backs, two wide receivers, a quarterback and a tight end. I'm going to go with wide receiver here first because I think Michael Pittman is an insta click in the seventh round. If Pittman wasn't available here, I would either be going with I want a bad bitch Jordan Addison Ray or... I like Jahan Dotson a lot, but I already have Terry McLaurin. And again, the Commanders aren't this excellent offense that, sure, I think Jahan Dotson and I think that McLaurin are both going to be good. But in reality, do you want two Washington Commanders on your team in the starting lineup every week? Because if I draft Jahan Dotson right now, since I drafted a quarterback and a tight end so early, I have to play Jahan Dotson in my flex. More, more than likely, half of the season if Jahan Dotson's as good as I think he is. And I don't really want two Commanders in my lineup all the time. Because we know how things can go when you have to play two players on a shitty offense in your lineup all the time. So we're going Pittman. Uh, Insta-click here, in my opinion. He is like a fifth-round draft pick in a lot of drafts. I think if you get him in the seventh round, that's a steal. If you say, oh, that's never going to happen, don't be shocked. Because a lot of people really don't think Michael Pittman's any good. They hate Anthony Richardson. So it makes perfect sense that he would fall this far. So we got Michael Pittman there. After we drafted MPJ, we see Kirko Chains, Danny Dimes, Samaje P. Ryan, and Jeff Wilson Jr. Jeff Wilson, a huge reach over A-Chain or Raheem Mostert. I don't think that is a good pick at all. So looking here, we could dive back into the wide receiver section. But if I'm being completely honest with you guys, late in fantasy drafts, there's so much wide receiver value in regular fantasy football drafts. Compared to on underdog, I found that there's so much value at the wide receiver position when doing these mock drafts. So I want to go running back here. Pick your poison. A.J. Dillon, that super safe option with immense upside if Rodgers, not if Rodgers, Rodgers is gone. If Aaron Jones was to get hurt, knock out Wood again, we know it for injuries. 
Khalil Herbert looked really good in Chicago last year. David Montgomery now gone. They draft a running back in Rashawn Johnson, and they also bring in Dante Fortman. I think Herbert's the best out of those. But again, that's a little bit risky. Antonio Gibson, I love in this offense with the Washington Commanders. Again, don't love the Commanders as a whole. Like a lot of their players for fantasy, though. But then we also have Madison, who I think could be the running back one for the Vikings. The second Dalvin Cook gets either traded or cut. So there's a lot to weigh here. If I knew for sure Dalvin Cook was gone, which I think is like a foregone conclusion for many, I think Dalvin Cook is gone already. I think he's going to be gone, but I wouldn't say it's like a mortal lock of the century. Like if it was life or death, like, and they said, Nick, you're going to die if you say Dalvin Cook is gone and he doesn't leave. Like, I definitely wouldn't say that because I don't think, again, it's like the mortal lock of the century. I don't think it's the safest bet. So I'm just going to go with the best player here. I'm going to go with AJ Dillon. I think he's pretty reliable. If you have to throw him in, like if Chubb or Bajan get hurt or if they're on a bye week, you just throw AJ Dillon in. He's not going to score you 40 points, right, in a week, but he could get you 10 points. He could be a reliable player and then if Jones was to get hurt he has that crazy upside obviously I think the Green Bay Packers offense is a little bit slept on so I'm pretty happy getting AJ Dillon there and maybe Antonio Gibson will fall to us even if he doesn't I think we made the correct decision in going AJ Dillon there because that crazy upside if anything was to happen to Aaron Jones and again Nick Chubb and Bijan Robinson you're never taking those fuckers out of the lineup for AJ Dillon you just never never are A.J. Dillon could become a flex if something was to happen to Aaron Jones, but he would never start above those guys because, again, I have really high hopes. I think both of these guys could easily be top three running backs this year. So now we're just going to keep hammering the wide receiver position. We got our three running backs. We're going to keep hammering wide receivers so that we can have a guy that might come in for McLaurin or Pittman based upon the matchup. Looking at the board, Rashad Master Bateman, Quinton Johnston, Darnell Mooney, Elijah Moore, Jameson Williams, Rondell Moore. A lot of people talking up Rondell Moore as well as Hollywood Brown for the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to go with QJ here, though. I think since I'm confident in my wide receiver core, I want to get a guy that I think has crazy upside. Keenan Allen and, to be honest, Mike Williams aren't necessarily the poster boys for being incredibly healthy. Now, could they play all year and I look like a fool with my pants on the ground, hat turned sideways like that American Idol contestant, of course. But I also think there's a chance that Mike Williams, who's already fucking hurt right now, misses a couple games. QJ slots in, looked great in college, looks great in an offense that's going to be throwing the ball as much as the Chargers. I think he's kind of a no-brainer pick in the ninth round. Now, if you're drafted a bunch of running backs early and you don't have a wide receiver 2-3 that you really trust, do you want Quinton Johnston? No. But if you're in a scenario where you have Pittman, McLaurin, Higgins, all guys that I like, yes, I'm very excited for my wide receiver number four to have that crazy league winning upside. We're going to go back to the well with the wide receiver position here yet again. I have never been an Elijah Moore guy in my entire life. When he was a Jet, I thought he was overrated. And now, even as a Cleveland Brown, I think that he's not overrated. It's just paying that price for a guy that you've never really seen do anything in the NFL feels gross. But I will acknowledge the upside of the Browns. I will acknowledge that if Deshaun Watson is back to form, like I think he could be, then Elijah Moore, the wide receiver two in an offense that could be that beautiful, would be amazing. There's also the question, a lot of people talking about D-Hop maybe going to the Cleveland Browns. If that happens, then obviously you dribbled Elijah Moore around on the ground and you throw him out into the fucking bin, the recycling bin, right? You don't need anything to do with Elijah Moore. But if Elijah Moore is the number two receiver, they don't bring in DeAndre Hopkins. You might have a steal. I think it's risky, but again, I'm confident in my other wide receivers that with these later picks, I'm very willing to take those upside shots. These guys might not even be on your roster come week three, week four. Elijah Moore could be a dud the first three games. And I'm not someone who just holds on to this dead fucking weight on my roster. I'm cutting him. He's gone. And someone else is going to come play for him or sit on the bench for him. So Elijah Moore joined the team. Welcome to the squad. After Elijah Moore, we see Zach Chardonnay, Michael Gallup, Nico Collins, Damian Harris, Ezekiel Elliott, Adam Thielen, Chase Claypool, Ty Quan Thornton, Sky with two Ys more. The 11th opens with Tyler. Yeah, Boyd, Zay Jones, Rondale Moore, Darnell. Here comes the Mooney, KJ Osborne, Geno Smith, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Elijah Mitchell, the Niners defense. Don't draft a defense until the last two rounds. It's crazy to draft one ahead of these pieces that could end up being league winners. Now, I have never been someone in my life who handcuffs a running back. 
if John Robinson goes down, sure, I'm probably fucked. I'd rather just draft someone else's handcuff who I think has upside. We have now have one, two, three, four, five wide receivers, three running backs. Got to get another running back. If Madison's here, obviously, that is a free click in the 11th round. Alexander Madison could easily be the number one running back on the Minnesota Vikings. If he wasn't there, was there anyone available that I also liked? Algier, Mingo coming off the board. A-Chain would have been a pretty easy click there as well. And we might just draft A-Chain here again. But the problem is this team is so built upon Bajan and Nick Chubb that I don't need to draft all of these other running backs. Like, I don't need A-Chain. While I like him a lot, I'd rather just draft these other wide receivers that could be better than Pittman or McLaurin, and I don't need a backup tight end. So we might end up just throwing a dart on a running back right at the end, but we're probably going wide receiver here. If this is a league where you have an IR spot that can put suspended players in, I'm drafting Jameson Williams, I'm throwing him on the IR, and then a couple weeks into the season, once he gets unsuspended, you just let him feel things out on your bench, right? Because you obviously have to take him out of the IR spot. So you let him feel things out on your bench, and then you throw him in there, like week eight, week nine, week 10. This guy's fucking incredibly fast, Lightning McQueen style. He's in an offense that I project to be really good this year in the Detroit Lions. This is an IR league. All leagues I play in have an IR where you can play a suspended player. So I'm doing that. If you couldn't do that, I probably would have went for a different wide receiver. But I think in the case where they're not just dead roster weight on your team, just chilling there, I think he's a pretty solid draft pick. After Jameson Williams comes Zay Flowers, David Njoku, Tua, turn of the ball over, Tua turn of Iloa, as they call him. Not a good nickname, though. Tua, tug on my cock, if you think that. Rashad Bateman, the Dolphins, Pat Fryermuth, Evan Ingram, Dalton Schultz, Cole Komet, Deonta Foreman, Rock, Sean Johnson, uh, Jalen Warren, Devin, off the chain, Jevin, two chains, Jerome Ford, Jerome Ford, Jerome Ford, Jarek McKinnon, Michael Cotta, Zonovan Knight, and A.A. Ron Rogers, Mr. Discount, double check. We'll close out the draft here with a running back. I like some of these wide receivers, but we're going RB here. We're going Kendra Miller. Could be the number one running back on the Saints if Kamara gets suspended. Is kind of built like Alvin Kamara. If you watch the tape in college, he looks similar to Kamara. I think that might be a big sleeper this year. Kendra Miller, Gus Edwards, Joshua Kelly, Russell Wilson, and Matthew Stafford. We're closing the draft with our defenses and our kickers. I'm going to go with best kicker available here. Pick your poison. You like Money McPherson. You like Harrison Bucker. You like Tyler Bass, Carlson, Tucker the fucker. We're going with Justin Tucker the fucker here with our pick here as our kicker. And then for defense, you want to draft the defense, playing the worst offense in week number one. And then after that, you can just cut them, or if they have a good opponent week two, you can play them again. But I don't draft defenses for the whole season. I draft the defense that I think is going to be good week one, and then who cares about the rest of the schedule? You just cycle the defenses in every week. It lets you put super good matchups together. Obviously, it's not going to work every week. You're going to pick a defense that goes up against some garbage offense, and that offense turns into the second coming of the fucking Kansas City Chiefs or something, and you're shit out of luck. But I think that's a lot better than just sticking with one defense all year. And the Jets, say Sauce Gardner gets hurt, knock on wood. I don't root for injuries. The Jets' defense gets mightily worse instantly. So it's much better to just stream the defense. And the Jets, I think, have the Bills week one. That doesn't sound very good for their week one, right? They could be negative points week one. I'm trying to remember who has a really good week one matchup. I'm going to have a video on this uh, in August. Week one against Houston, the Ravens. We're going to go with that. Week one up against C.J. Stroud in his rookie year. We get an A, 93 out of 100. Don't worry about the grade you get on here, ESPN, Yahoo!, Anywhere, doesn't matter. Obviously, we got an A because our team's amazing, but even if it's at C, I would tell you this team's amazing. Our feel, our team is comprised of Justin Fields, B. John Robinson, 9-inch Nicholas Chubb, T. He, Higgins, Terry McLaurin, Mark Andrews, Michael Pittman, Baltimore Ravens defense, Justin Tucker the fucker, A.J. Dillon, Quentin Johnston, Elijah Moore, Alexander Madison, Jameson Williams, and Kendra Miller. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know. I love you guys all so much. I hope you all have a great rest of your guys' day. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Good boy!